Greetings. My name is Angel Marie Cook and I am the District Science Supervisor. This year, for the first time ever, we held a seventh grade science fair. Over 360 students entered our science fair. They went through all of the stages of the scientific method and as a result, on December 14th and 15th, we showcase 130 of our top scoring projects. So let us now take a look at the many entries and the winners of this year's science fair. Soraya Rashid. My name is Jana Melendez. And we did our project on if like temperature will affect the strength of a magnet. So the cold, we heated the magnet and we froze it. The heat took away the magnet's magnetism. And the cold temperature did really no effect. And the room temperature really built it up. So then after we did all the testing, we found out that it does affect the strength of the magnet and our hypothesis was correct. My name is Logan Endis. I made Matchbox guitars to represent how a string instrument works. So my purpose was to show how the vibrations in a guitar produce different sounds and different pitches. To find this out, I made eight Matchbox guitars that were open more or less than each other and that were different sizes. After making the, 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 the guitars, I would measure how many the decibel output with an advanced sound meter and measure its frequency. So I made these guitars and I discovered that pitch that I made was 78 hertz, which is almost the lowest sound that a human can hear. A human can hear like 50 hertz to 20,000 hertz of sound. So the lowest sound was 78 hertz. I also made a guitar that came out as 621 hertz, which is the highest that I could make. All right, so our, what we were testing in this experiment was that if you add more salt to a salt solution that it will conduct more electricity. And we thought that will happen, like that if we add more salt, it will conduct more. And if there's less salt, that there will be less electricity. So when we were going through our experiment, our data, it showed that like once we were adding too much, it just, the electricity just started to deplete and like, so like every procedure we did, each trial we added 10 grams of salt and tested it with a voltmeter. And like every time we researched something, it said that it would do that, but only one of them said that it would deplete. And uh, our conclusion is that once we started to find, once we started to do our, um, our experiment, we started finding out that the electricity started to deplete, so that proved that our hypothesis was wrong. My name is Emily and my project was Does Color Affect Memory? And I wanted to find out if color affected memory and I thought you would be able to remember color better than black. And my hypothesis was correct because color affects some people's memory, but not most. So the results was 
Average score for people remembering color is 3.78%, which means that color is remembered better than black. One thing that I would do differently next time is test certain people in, the, in a room by themselves because there was about two or three participants that the color that were in the room while I was testing other people. I have learned from this project that color does affect memory, but it depends on your knowledge and memorization. Hello, my name is Matthew Wallace. I'm in seventh grade. My project name is the Stroop Effect. The, my hypothesis for the Stroop Effect is that the Stroop Effect will be greater in adolescents and males because adults and females will have a greater attention span. Now, my results from this is the Stroop Effect is used in neurophysiological evaluations to measure the mental viality and flexibility since performing well requires strong attention and habitation and self-regulation. Self regulation, compatibility, sharp brains. My hypothesis was that th I thought the Stroop effect would be greater in adolescents and males because the adults and females will have greater attention span. According to my data, and the hypothesis was flawed, my, da my data proved that the, ad the adult test subjects performed more poorly at the Stroop effect than adolescents. My data, al my data also prefer proved, proved that female test subjects perform more poorly at the Stroop effect than males. So the data, so the data has proved that the adolescent males have have better mental viality and flexibility than adolescent and females, adult males and females. My conclusion of this is I chose this experiment to determine the effect that gender and age have have on the Stroop effect. My hypothesis was that I assumed that the Stroop effect would be greater in adolescents and males than adult and females. We would have greater attention span. According to my data, hypothesis was flawed. My data proved that adult test subjects performed more poorly with average scores between 60 to 74. And the Stroop effect test than adolescents who scored an average between 57 to 67. My data also proved that the female test subjects performed more poorly at the Stroop, te Stroop test than the males. The female test, uh, the female test subjects average scored between 57 to 74, and the male scored between 60 to 67. So my hypothesis was not supported by my data. The data demonstrated that the adolescent males scored lower, which indicated that they read less and, ma and made less mistakes. This project proved it is difficult to ignore the names of the colors and just say the colors of the ink. This is because verbal functions are in the left hemisphere and nonverbal functions are right in the right hemisphere. This effect requires both of the hemispheres. This is also a significantly more complex process and requires the more time to na navigate. It also proved that adolescent males have better mental reality and flexibility than adolescent females, adult males and females. <laughs> My name is Mila Haraf. I'm in seventh grade, and my project was a portable, it's called portable charger testing batteries. My problem or purpose for conducting this experiment was to find out what kind of battery would charge a phone the fastest using a homemade portable charger and to test the effectiveness of the batteries at different temperatures. My hypothesis was that a warm lithium battery would charge a cell phone faster than an alkaline battery at room temperature using a homemade portable charger. My conclusion was that the hypothesis was wrong because the Energizer alkaline battery gave the most charge at room temperature while the phone was set to airplane mode. I think that the lithium battery would have a greater lifespan but would not charge as fast as 9 volt battery.
Hi, my name is Nicholas Wolfel, and I'm in seventh grade. I dropped three different size rocks into topsoil and sand to become the creator of craters. My purpose for this project was to find out what would change the size of an impact crater. I changed the size of the rock, the material it was dropped into, and how high they were dropped from. <clears throat> Once I dropped all of the rocks, I took pictures and I measured the depth, which is up here in my data. Once I looked at all the data a couple of times, I found out that um, I would be able to, or the topsoil was denser than the sand was, so the sand would leave bigger craters. Hello, my name is um, Andrew Nguyen, and um, the problem that I had was I wanted to know does age affect human memory. I wanted to see is that if as you get older, does your memory, if your memory changes. So my hypothesis was that I thought that young adults would have the best memory, and then I, uh, I thought that it would be teens who have the next memory since their brain would be close to being fully developed. And then I thought it would be a pretty close race between the children and adults, because the children's memory is not really that much developed, and the adult's memory has somewhat going in decline. So um, my results were that the young adults did get the best memory, but it was the adults and the children who got the next best memory. Then it was the teens who got the worst memory, and teens did get the worst memory probably because the teens were as focused as the children and the adults and the young adults. So what I learned was that young adults do have the best memory, and probably because their brain is more developed than everyone else. The children and the adults, even though why not they have the best memory, they still performed really well because they were more focused than the teens. Uh, and the teens were more distracted than everyone else. They were trying to check their phone, they were trying to talk to other people while remembering, so that could be a result of why they got a lower score. And I also um, came to the conclusion that along with age that can affect memory, it can also be gender and the focus and the focus of the person. I hope you enjoyed the showcase of our seventh grade students in the first annual seventh grade science fair. I hope you will join us this coming May with the eighth grade science fair. See you there.